Hi everyone, and welcome to 5 Minutes of British Literature. Let's talk about chivalry and knighthood. Today we associate chivalry closely with knighthood, especially in medieval romances and stories about King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table. But the history of that relationship in England is more complicated. Chivalry came to England via the Norman invasion in 1066, and originally the word referred to cavalry. The French Normans had mounted fighting units, while the native English did not. However, the Normans also brought a new ethic of warfare. Unlike traditional English warfare, in which the custom was to grind your enemies into the dirt and leave no survivors unharmed, the Normans believed that extending mercy and respect to one's vanquished enemies was the way to go. In exchange for their loyalty, William the Conqueror let the defeated English keep their lives and integrate into the new Norman ruling class. From there, in the two centuries after the Norman invasion, knighthood developed into an organized warrior class just under the nobility and social status, and chivalry evolved into a code of honor for the upper classes. Knights were formally inducted into service to a noble, they adopted elaborate coats of arms to identify their families and advertise their prestige, and they often attained great wealth and status through their deeds in battle. First and foremost, knights were soldiers. War was the main reason that they existed, and war occupied the center of their education. Knights were expected to master arms and horseback riding, to hone their physiques, and when they were ready, to participate in tournaments, where they could display their fighting prowess in front of an audience. These activities were designed to prepare knights for their ultimate purpose, to defend their lord in his holdings, to fight for their kingdom, and when called by the pope, to make war on behalf of the church. In the late Middle Ages, English knighthood evolved into more of a noble class and came with expectations of refinement and gentility. During the 14th century, knightly education came to include not just combat skills, but also music, dancing, etiquette, and perhaps most important, religion. Knights were expected to protect the weak, to be courteous to their peers, to be gallant to women, and to be models of Christian manhood, all the virtues that we tend to associate with chivalry today. Consequently, Sir Gawain of the King Arthur legends became a prominent literary figure in this time period. In Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, he's presented as the ideal knight, the heart and soul of Arthur's court. Gawain is loyal, humble, brave, pious, and self-sacrificing to a fault. For most of the story, he functions as a Christ figure. He agrees to sacrifice himself for his king's life and honor, he goes forward to face his death alone, and he resists temptations along the way. Sir Gawain is the example to which knights were supposed to aspire. However, this ethos was starting to go out of style by the end of the 14th century. Knights were still partly a warrior class, and they still expected to wage war as their means to wealth and social advancement. A lot of English knights spent a lot of the 14th century in France fighting the Hundred Years' War, in which they became notorious for their brutality and penchant for looting. When they returned home, many continued to resort to violence as their primary way to gain land, defend their prestige, and resolve disputes among each other. And with chivalry being such an honor-based ethos, many knights and aristocrats admired that kind of violence. It demonstrated that the knight was valorous, and willing to defend his reputation with his own body. But advancements in war technology and the centralization of the English government made knights less relevant and less effective, and few people wanted a bunch of idle upper-class warriors roaming the country and getting into fights with each other over loot and honor. The performance aspects of chivalry survived for a long time, but functionally, Knighthood as gallant warrior class died out by around the 16th century. A work like Sir Gawain and the Green Knight could be a celebration of a highly regarded social class, but it could also be a nostalgic story about a culture that was slipping away. Thanks for watching, and be sure to watch the video for the Matter of Britain this week as well.